Cash Flow Diary Podcast, Episode 530. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cash Flow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leveraged streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game, Jay Massey. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Massey, and I'm glad that you are here today because when it comes down to it, you and I, we, we are full of ideas. We're entrepreneurs. That's what we do. We generate ideas, which seem like they come from who knows where. But yet, I would be willing to bet that most of you listening right now, you have way more ideas than you actually do evidence of those ideas. What I mean by that is actually a company where they became something. See, there's this process of going from idea to implementation. And I have with me today a guest who's done that in the app space. And what's interesting is that going from idea to implementation is exactly what we're going to talk about. Because you know, like I know, you've had that idea, you know, mm, they should have an app for that. And you've had the thought and what you've done is let that idea sit. So today, here's what I want you to do. I have with me none other than Jeff Cook. He's the co-founder and CEO of The Meat Group. And and you may have heard of PodCoin as well. Now, here's the thing. We're going to talk a lot about many different things. But I want you to take the lessons because we're talking to a lifelong entrepreneur And if you were looking to start an app today, I bet you what we're about to go through is exactly what you want to hear. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take some notes, pay attention, and help me welcome Jeff Cook. Jeff, how you doing? Good, good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm glad that you are here. I appreciate you taking the time. Now, this being the first time that you're here, I have to ask you the same question that I tend to ask everybody else the first time that they're here. You ready? Sure. All right. I tend to look at today's entrepreneurs a lot like yesterday's superheroes, you know, like Batman, Robin, Wonder Woman, etc. because I think superheroes and entrepreneurs have a ton of things in common. For example, as an entrepreneur, occasionally I can envision myself flying around town using our products and services and saving our customers one sale at a time. And I'm probably wearing a cape at that moment. Also, though, like a superhero, an entrepreneur has a beginning. For example, if you think about Spider-Man, there was a time where he was just a kid, going to school, doing his thing, taking some photos, trying to make some extra money. And then one day he gets bit by a spider, discovers he's got a superhuman ability, and now he has to figure out what to do. Is he going to use his powers for good or for evil? So my question to you is as follows. Before, you know, PodCoin, before the meat group, before all the acquisitions the meat group has gone through, before everything that people know you for today, what we want to know is, who is Jeff Cook? Yeah, wow, that's that's, that's quite a question. So, um, you know, I, I guess my my story before, before entrepreneurship, I, I guess I started as an entrepreneur you know, as a sophomore at, in college. Um, mm. so, um, it's, it really goes back quite, quite some ways. Um, but, but, I, and so I, I kind of view this as somewhat different question. Like who is Jeff Cook? You know, I think, I think it's a collection of terms, you know, I'd probably say father, husband, mm-hmm. you know, entrepreneur, um, you know, friend, you, you know, so, so I, I think entrepreneurship is, is clearly one facet and it's been one, um, that, that I've been, um, uh, been I've essentially been true with been true to for for some time, you know. I, before entrepreneurship, you know, I I kind of got into this because I I didn't want 
to work for someone else. I was actually looking at um, getting a job in a library because I, I was a student and I needed to, to make some money. Um, and so I didn't particularly want to uh, you know, make a, a job at six or eight dollars an hour, whatever it was, uh, kind of sitting in the library and was kind of interested. It was it, the time was 1997. And so there was so much going on in, in the Internet space um, and said, well, what can I do? What, what would anybody pay me for? Um, and that's that's how this that's how at least my story started. Prior to that, I hadn't had any entrepreneurship experience or really even any thoughts. It was it was really just up. Oh, I got to make some money. Uh, should I work for someone or should I can I figure something else out? Totally understood. Totally understood. Now, you said something that I I, I want to dig into for a quick second. You said you, you didn't want to work for someone else. Uh, and I think a number of people listening can relate to that desire, that compulsion, that feeling, whatever you want to call it. How did you discover that you didn't want to do that particular thing, i.e. work for something else, someone else? Yeah, you know, I, I think um, <laughs> maybe even going back as far as high school, um, you know, myself and authority sometimes butt heads. Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I, I think that I, I also tend to just have this view that, you know, if, if you wanted to, you know, if your point is to to make money and at some point, you know, your, your intention is to make money. Um, if you're simply selling out your time, then, um, you can't really make that much money. Right. So, mm -hmm. so, so, so the way to build anything significant is to, for nonlinear, um, growth and, you know, your time scales linearly. So, so how do you, how can you make something, how do you, how can you create value when you're sleeping essentially? Mm -hmm. And to do that, you know, you essentially have to have to create a business, um, or, you know, that, that's kind of the best way to do that, you know, in these times. Um, and so that's, you know, I, I don't think I had that big a viewpoint when I just decided to start editing some, <laughs> some work on, on, uh, online. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think I, I was more, gee, I could make six to eight bucks an hour in the library, or I could make, 30 or 40 bucks an hour, um, doing something myself. And there, there's some chance that I'll make zero because I'll have no customers, <laughs> but, um, you know, it'll at least be fun and interesting to, to try. Um, and, and I, I was kind of interested at the time and learning a little bit about the internet, which, you know, is still pretty early in 97, um, setting up an e-commerce engine. So I thought, you know what, even if this, even if I just lose 600 to a thousand dollars, setting all this stuff up, um, this will, this will be an experience and, and, and it'll probably be more interesting than, than, than anything I would, I would otherwise do. And it, I could always get that job in the library. <laughs> yes, indeed. I've never heard anyone though. You're unique in the fact that you're actually like pursuing a job or thinking about a job in the library. I'm like that, that, that's just special in and of itself. But I, I have a question here. I love what you said about, you know, what's the kind of the worst thing that could happen? I've often said that you get your first jobs or businesses for you. You do those first deals for experience and then and, and, and then later you get to profit from that experience. So you do your first deals for experience, not profit. And then later you get to profit from your experience, which is uh, I'm going to assume is true for your case, because you're saying you didn't necessarily start where you are today. So it sounded like there was many iterations uh, or, or maybe in an evolution that you went through that took you from editing online to to where you are today. Take us on that journey a little bit, if you will. Yeah, you know that that's that's kind of an interesting story. So you know, the, the, my first business and, and you know, the, the one I run is essentially the the second significant business. But the the, the first business started uh, at a, in a dorm room at Harvard. And I basically you know started as well. What what can I do? And I thought, well, gee, I um, can edit essays. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a good writer. Um, maybe I could even edit resumes. Um, and so I, I basically learned enough about creating a web page and integrating an e-commerce engine to put this up on, on online in 1997. And that, you know, I, I think what I tend to be is I, I like to solve problems. Like what, what, the, what's the next problem? I, I didn't really conceive of, but because I've solved these three problems, I now am presented with this fourth. And so that gets you things from like, okay, now that the thing's online, how do I get anybody to come to it? 
Um, <laughs> and, and, and like that, that, I find that interesting. So then you learn a little bit about, you know, this is, this is before, you know, this is in the days of like overture before there was, um, you know, Google AdWords. <laughs> right. Um, and, uh, you know, so, so then, then I learned about search engine optimization, kind of had an interesting, uh, marketing concept around content management and, and was able to, to, to basically take this little side job from, you know, $10,000 in my first year, my sophomore year at, at college. Yeah, I, I probably made about ten thousand dollars doing this, um, and I thought that was great. It was exactly what I wanted. You know, it was, um, uh, you know, I was probably making fifty bucks an hour, you know, there ish. Um, and and then I I basically spent um, some an internship uh, somewhere else um, <clears throat> in Denver, mm. and and at night I would just come home and work on my website. And the internship I took was with a an entrepreneur who uh, his name is John Funk who built this very sizable venture back company in, in Denver. And I basically, um, uh, you know, got, got a, at least a taste of what a, a big significant internet company looks like. Mm. Um, and then when I would go home, I would really just work on, uh, my company at the time, which was, which was called essay edge, um, and later resume edge and, and really just redesigned it soup to nuts next year, junior year at college, I, I you know, $40,000 a year. And I'm still doing all of the um, editing myself, mm. um, and I continue to, to do that um, till till the the end of that year. I thought, you know, you know what? This is making so much money that like forty thousand dollars a year is, is much more than I imagined. You know, making on the side while going right. doing an economics degree at Harvard, right? So like, um, I thought, well, gee, this is kind of interesting. Um, let me take the summer and just work on it. So. Um, my now wife and I, uh, but at the time my girlfriend, um, basically just hold up in a house in Palm Springs, California, because Palm Springs is cheap in the summer <laughs> and, <laughs> and basically built out this website significantly better. Yeah, I'd learned a lot. Um, and, um, and, and, and at the same time built out like a way of hiring people to do the actual editing. And so that I was really the, the chief editor, you know, the, the, the editor in chief able to train them and identify them, um, and then ensure quality. So basically took it from basically being a one man shop to something I could scale while having a much better website. And by, by that last year, you know, it was pushing $300,000. My senior year it was pushing like 300,000 a year in, in, in revenue. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and it had scaled it to a hundred plus people, um, actually completing the work. And I would go on to scale that to, to five plus million a year in revenue in just a couple of years. But, but that was, um, that was that was kind of the the first foray into entrepreneurship for me, and it was it all started with just like, hey, I, I just want to edit some essays because I don't want this job at the library. <laughs> exactly, and and for those of you who might not be familiar with the Overture, you you, you might be familiar with this, this was back in the days where you might have heard of things like Alta Vista, Ash Jeeves, Up, but and long before Upwork, it sounds like you're doing outsourcing. I don't know even I don't even know how you did it, but you use those same principles in order to build something that uh, does it still exist today? Yeah. I, as far as I know, you know, I haven't gone to that website in a long time, but um, I think it does. Uh, the last maybe a year or two ago, I checked, I sold it to a company um, in uh, and then left around 2004. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and so, but, but I know it continues and um, I awesome. think it, it continues to do well. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now, so the, you, you've achieved something that many are looking to do. Many uh, love the idea of executing their first exit. And I also want everybody to hear that the idea was simple. I just want to edit essays. It wasn't overly complicated. It, was, it sounds like one of the most uh, easy business models to, to implement and, and to start with. So how do we go from I sold my company over to Podcoin, like what got you back in the game? Because many people would have said, "Hey, I'm done." Got it. So, um, yeah, Podcoin is actually a company that that I advise my brother on and and, and am associated with. But the the next kind of step in my entrepreneurial journey was a mm -hmm. company called um, My Yearbook. Okay. Um, and My Yearbook is something that I started actually along with my brother and sister, who at the time were, um, I think they were. 16 and 17. So, th so they were in high school. I'm 10 years older. 
Okay. And we start in 2005, this social network called My Yearbook. And um, it, it, we, we launch it in just their high school, um, which was at Montgomery High School, Skillman, New Jersey. And we have this kind of interesting T-shirt strategy, like very, very guerrilla marketing, just like, hey, tell your friends about this. Um, and, you know, giving away kind of interesting little things. Um, and, and in the first week, you know, we got about three or 400 students from Montgomery High School on it. Um, we would later, um, you, but, but that, that spread wasn't really enough. You know, it, it wasn't like you build it and they will come for this. Um, and, and this is you know, to set the stage a little bit. MySpace is very popular. <laughs> Facebook was in just one school. So Facebook right. was at just Harvard. Um, and you know, I'm one of the, the first Facebook users. Um, and so we, I thought, gee, this social networking thing, and, and I'm, the timing's right because I'm just coming off the first business. Um, had just sold it and kind of looking for something to do. And I was thinking originally it would be like art um, in the art space. I even own the domain artstudio.com. But I thought, and, and, and I even bought a web community for artists that I would later sell um, because because the social networking was really taking off. And so I said, well, gee, social networking is going to be big. Of course, I, I didn't see it was going to be this big, right. but, but I thought it was going to be big. Mm-hmm. And I thought, gee, th- there isn't really a social network for meeting new people, right? There's a social network for for friends, and that was kind of my space. And then there's this social network for college students, and that looked like what Facebook was going to be. Obviously, Facebook became more than that. Um, but then we thought, well, let's do this thing, social network for, for, for people you don't know. And that's what my yearbook became. We later renamed it to Meet Me. Um, and, you know, I, that, that was a, a quite a journey. You know, we, we went, we got our first million users signed up in the first nine months. And, mm. you know, when you say that, it always sounds like, oh, gee, that was preordained to work. Um, <laughs> but, but it wasn't, you know, like th- there was, there was a couple of very interesting key things that we did. Uh, one of them was leverage the virality of the MySpace platform to, mm. to have this cool quiz app. Um, and, and, and we, we basically turned a lot of uniques into uh, a lot of page views because we're, we're, we're partic- I think we're reasonably good product. I'm a reasonably good product person mm-hmm. who is able to kind of extract, you know, more time with the user um, by building kind of interesting experiences. So when I was able to kind of stumble upon kind of an interesting way of getting unique visitors to the app um, or to the website at the time, and then then use product kind of expertise to to spend more time with them. Um, that, that's how I really created value in that first business. And, you know, I, I sold that, uh, in 2011 for, for a hundred million dollars to a public company. Got it. Now I'm just curious because a lot of people wonder this, how much of your economics degree and training paid, played a role in any of the things we've talked about so far? Hello there, entrepreneur. This is Jay Massey. I know that if you've ever gone over to the site, cashflowdiary.com, you may have asked yourself, where on earth do you get a domain name from? Especially as you are beginning to build your bigger, better, badder business, you need a web presence. You need the email address. You need a way for people to contact you electronically so that you can stop doing the at gmail.com game. Well, the good folks over at GoDaddy have definitely supplied us with every domain that we have ever used. So what I want you to do is I want you to go over to trygodaddy.com forward slash cash flow diary again that's try godaddy.com forward slash cash flow diary because it's a quick way for you to get set up to capture your domain name the exact way that you want it they got easy search functions and most importantly for you is that you'll be up and running today as i said once you get started stay started don't let small little obstacles of how to get your own domain name going stop you so again Go to trygodaddy.com forward slash cash flow diary and let's get back to the rest of the story. You know, um, in the early, early days uh, of, of, of essay edge, it actually did play some of a role. Like I, I think a good education is, is important. And, and, and if I had a psychology degree or a, or a literature degree, I probably wouldn't have changed the story all that much. But I did actually apply, like, uh, I, like I would sit in an economics class and learn about price differentiation, like di- differentiating based on uh, price and, and, and who your customers are mm-hmm. and apply it directly to, to the business by, like, have basically saying, OK, we don't just help you improve your college admissions as they, you know, we'll do your business school, your law school, your grad school. 
Mm-hmm. And yeah, that allow, allows you to charge more um, and, and also just better tailor the experience to, to certain people um, who, who have specific needs. And so, um, you know, I would say, you know, it was a factor. It's it certainly it, it's certainly just a helpful way of thinking about the world. It, it's hard to draw a straight line to say, well, if it wasn't for that, then you know, this would never have happened. Totally understood. Totally understood. Now, you've completed your second exit and you're once again in a familiar position looking for something to do. How do we end up at PodCoin? <laughs> yeah. So th- there's another step. So um, the and, and what I do today is um, I run a, a public company called the Meek Group. So mm-hmm. I, I did sell the company, but I ended up coming back. Um, I see. You did a uh, Steve within, Jobs on us? <laughs> <laughs> within about 18 months. Uh, or thereabouts. It was sometime in, in early, I think, 2013. Um, and I've been with the company um, since then, came back as the CEO, um, and w- basically changed a, a number of things. One is we, we have this big commitment now to live streaming video. So we built a pretty significant live streaming video business, you know, 80 plus million uh, in just the last you know, really year and a half. We built this 80 plus million revenue stream on top of, um, you know, we, we should do according to our guidance you know, 200 plus million in revenue um, this year. And, um, you know, I built this, uh, this, this live streaming video stream and that's, that's just extremely fast growing. Um, and because building live streaming video is such a commitment, like there, it's, um, it's, it's a very, you, you can imagine that you need to have a lot of moderation capabilities, a lot yep. of machine learning, algorithmic capabilities, um, we said, well, gee, uh, the existing audience of a million plus daily active users, while it's big, you know, it, it, if we had more, it, you know, we would get even more value and be able to leverage this platform we were building. Um, and, and so then we started acquiring other apps. And that's when we acquired um, Scout and Tag. Um, mm-hmm. And we spent $200 million basically acquiring um, four other apps, most recently uh, an app called Growler, which is our first gay dating app. Um, all with the idea of wrapping our live streaming video platform into it. And, and that's been going, um, that's been going extremely well. That's an interesting strategy. How did you decide to, instead of, I mean, in today's world, I mean, obviously you can build things from the ground up, but this time you decided to just buy what you needed. Yeah, no, that's a great question. And, and, you know, in the early days of MySpace and, and the early days of Facebook, Mm-hmm. There were all this virality in these platforms where if you were pretty good at creating a viral channel, a viral flow, even people could do this uh, with email address books, right? If, if you can get one person to give you, you know, uh, an email, enough email contacts where um, you, know, you got more than one person coming in for every person you got, um, you could have this very vi- viral growth. and. Um, and w- we were able to do that with MySpace, and then we were able to do that with Facebook. Uh, those days are more or less over. Um, you, know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can't you can't easily go out and uh, and I wouldn't say it came easily, but you you know it, it's just not not available to you. Those channels are closed. Um, and so now, what I tend to think is what and if you if you really want to grow an app today, you need. Um, two things you could either buy it right. or or you build it and if you're going to build it and not have all these things available to you then what you have left is novelty right like you mm-hmm. can create some concept that that just wants to spread because it's so novel and this is extremely of course difficult to do and and novelty by itself is in my mind not a precondition you know it, it, or it's a precondition but it's not sufficient um and so so you know then you kind of need often a little bit of luck, a little bit of just a uh, a good marketing strategy that um, that that somehow tries to engineer lightning in a bottle, and and so what your question is why buy? And we said, well, gee, lightning in a bottle is a tough business strategy, but you know what is out there and a way to grow our daily active users. Um, there's other companies that have basically reached a level of growth where they might have been growing modestly, but you know they they weren't poised to go add live streaming video. Because they maybe they didn't want to spend the amount of significant significant resources mm-hmm. to do so, um, and 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 maybe the, the entrepreneurs were tired because a lot of times when you're you're in a, a venture backed entrepreneur and these were all venture backed companies one was backed by Andreessen Horowitz another by oh. you know Mayfield 
very significant venture right. back company. I'm like, that's not and, a bad, that's not bad backing right there. <laughs> right. But, but, you know, if, if you get to a point where, um, you're no longer growing like a rocket ship and you're starting to have to eke out EBITDA gains, you oh, know, profitability gains year yeah. over year, the, the entrepreneur is like, Oh, you know, maybe this is the right time to sell. And, and so we, we, we basically got this window where, you know, we were able to buy, and 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 these entrepreneurs that built something significant were able to sell, and we were able to talk the same language on price because often there's a mismatch there where maybe the private guy thinks his company's worth a billion dollars, but you think it's only worth fifty million, right? <laughs> and so <laughs> right. Uh, you don't you're not going to scale that chasm. But you know if you get to the the right kind of um, uh, macro conditions. Um, and, and that, that was the opportunity we saw that there were these interesting things that were venture backed, um, and that could, would probably take our exit and, and, and it would still make sense for the public company. And so, so we, we, we started buying, um, traffic that way, but only if we could, uh, plug our video solution into it. Cause that was really the value we were bringing, like, mm -hmm. um, you know, buying something that's modest growing and then, and then suddenly activating, uh, you know, a revenue stream that's good for a 50% bump in revenue, right? That's, that's a massive, you know, improvement in, in, in the underlying business. And that's, that's ultimately like how we think about these types of deals. Totally understood. And, and for everybody, I just want to make sure that you, you understand what, what really happened here is that you, you had a situation where it went from an investor who was seeking significant growth, who was okay to one that was more open to growth and income, and he, he strike, striking at the right time seems to be very key for most entrepreneurs. So this brings up the following question. I know you, you recently did a presentation, I believe it was entitled The Future of Streaming. And you're organizing everything around streaming. Why? So I'm kind of curious. You must see something. Take us on this journey. You're, 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 you're making a lot of efforts around live streaming. What is it that we as entrepreneurs don't see that you're seeing that makes it such an important tool for for the public to have or for entrepreneurs to have? Sure. So, you know, I've been running these social apps for, for some time. And and what are these people? What are people doing in these social apps? They're sending chats and they're updating, uploading photos, and maybe commenting on these photos. Mm -hmm. um, and I got to see firsthand that when. And that always felt kind of flat, right? Like when, when you're browsing, even mm. if it's a very busy community and it has maybe even you know a million people there every day, it feels flat. It's just a bunch of photos on a screen. But when you when we added video and we, we got to see these users live, mm. um, and, you know, if it went from becoming just like a notebook to feeling like, you know, a, a nightclub. Right. <laughs> and so like it, it just became much more um, interesting. And so. Um, you know, I think, I think there's just something very visceral and real and, and, and just very interactive about live video. And I, I basically saw that as, you know, in the very earliest days with, with SA Edge, you know, e-commerce, 1997, e-commerce was interesting, right? Ability to sell something online mm -hmm. in, in 2004, 2005, social networking, you know, that was interesting. And mm -hmm. like social networking, of course, is huge, um, now, is live streaming as big? I, I don't know, but 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 it, it's, it strikes me as going to be very significant and that a lot of the things that we consume in uh, yeah, kind of a recorded or traditional television media today will have live streaming analogs. So, you know, like they're, I, I, I took HQ media or HQ, uh, the app HQ is a good example. Like this is almost like that's the trivia app where, where mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. answer questions like that was is at least an early kind of example of maybe like jeopardy or, 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 you know, kind of moving into a live streaming space. And so we think of like, well, what other types of interesting formats might you have? Um, and, you know, so, so I, I, I think we also ask ourselves, you know, do we think there'll be more live streaming two or three years from now or less? Right. And like, I think I would say I'm nine a hundred percent. You know, I normally don't use a hundred percent. Like, right. there's not going to be less live streaming two or three years from now. There's going to be more, um, and the quality of the live streams are going to get better. And we're we're seeing that now. Um, like, there'll, there'll be a dating game live streaming. There'll be 
the gong show american idol live streaming right like there'll be a live streaming example of of a lot of things you can think of and and a live streaming example of things you can't because you can only do them in a live streaming format and so i think um I think video in general is, is, is going to be just take, uh, take it more and more share. Yeah. And the subset of video that interests me, uh, mostly because of the communities I have, is, is the live streaming. Got it. And I, and I, I agree with you 100%. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I remember watching I've HQ start and just see how fast it has grown. It has been like, wow, that's amazing. Live streaming is it, this is where this is where we're headed. This is kind of neat. I've seen things, uh, and I'm sure many people have seen things from from the from the Oscars to all kinds of special events where live streaming components are now a part of you know whatever it is that we're watching, which I think is awesome. But we're talking a lot about video. Podcoin is not video, is it? No, no, that's that's interesting. So, you know, I think Podcoin was was an interesting idea that uh, my brother is actually, uh, and and the same brother, I also founded my yearbook with my sister, uh, mm -hmm. but um, had this interesting idea. And, and I said before that I think if you're going to start an app from scratch today, mm -hmm. like the only thing that you can really differentiate on is is novelty. The the only thing that you could basically say like. Yeah, I'm going to get some viral spread as if the app just feels very um, different. Mm -hmm. And, you know, video is interesting. Audio is interesting, too. Right. And, and you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, you say audio and video for a reason because they're they're kind of interactive uh, live video is, is, is kind of a, a lean in experience. Right. Like you're, mm -hmm. you're you're very involved. Maybe you're commenting to the person. Maybe you're giving a gift to the streamer. Maybe you're the streamer themselves. Maybe you're a guest of the streamer. But it's very interactive. Um, and audio listening is, of course, lean back. Like, you're probably not just doing that. Like, you're, you might be working out. You might be running. You might be in your car commuting. Um, and, you know, it's almost the, uh, the other side of the coin, right? Like, they, they're very related sorts of experiences. And my brother had this concept that, look, I'm going to pay people to listen to podcasts. And, like, on first blush, you say, well, that's ridiculous. Like, how are you going to make any money? Which is, is, is a fair thought, but, right. but, but it has it has the novelty, right? Like paying people to listen. Okay, uh, like lots of people listen to podcasts today, mm -hmm. but they're not getting paid um, by their podcast listener. And you can tell a story and say, well, why is that, right? Because paying people to listen is really no different than just saying it's a loyalty points program for, for podcast listening. And okay. why shouldn't you? And some loyalty points why shouldn't you have some capability um you know why shouldn't you share in kind of a business's financial rewards if you're the user powering all those rewards right and i, I think um you know we see it when out of asian live streaming like it, it, a lot of the, the live streaming models in asia all rely upon um a big tipping model where, where the viewers are, are giving gifts to the streamers and the streamers are making a lot of, of, of revenue, in some cases, millions of dollars um, in this tipping model. And the streamer is basically sharing a piece of it with the network. Um, you know, so, so I, I think there's this trend towards not just the content creators, but also the content consumers sharing in the economic rewards of the apps or, 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 or tools that they're using. Um, and so, and so the PodCoin is kind of a play on that trend. So, okay. I, I'm hearing you, but I'm not completely following the business model yet because I'm like, all right, you're paying listeners to listen to podcasts that they can otherwise listen to for free on other platforms. How does PodCoin actually how, how does the business model actually work? And more importantly, why would a content provider? Why would I want to do such a thing? Yeah, so. Interesting question. So, so I think the it it all goes back to the novelty. So, so like in the first example or in the second business I started my yearbook, um, mm -hmm. that was a social network, um, and we had no ads, no no monetization for two years. And 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 the thought was we'll eventually figure that out. But the the hardest problem is aggregation of audience. It's not how do you monetize a large audience. That's actually a solved problem for the most part. If you have a big audience, you're going to monetize it. Um, it. It's how do you get one? And so PodCoin is a very new concept. It's only a few months old. Um, 
it, it, it doesn't monetize today. But if the question is, well, how would it monetize in the future? I mean, if you have a significant audience and you can direct people to certain podcasts and not to others by simply varying the rate of th- that you earn loyalty points at, you can create discovery of podcasts that would otherwise never go discovered. And podcasters may well um, in the future be willing to pay for some promotion. Um, I don't know, 10 cents per listening hour, you know, five cents per listening hour. I don't know what the right number is. Um, but, but that's, that's kind of the, th- that's kind of where it could go. Got it. So the, uh, the content producer who's looking to gain their audience, you're giving them a direct way to, to kind of do that by incentivizing the, the listener with various techniques, uh, with the loyalty points is that, is that how I'm hearing exactly. it? Okay. That's, that's exactly right. And the, the trick is like, can you get a hundred thousand plus DAU, um, listening or, you know, cause, cause if you can't do something like that, then it's probably not that big, a big an idea. So I, I think I tend to, to say, well, look, the, the monetization can wait, um, you know, as, as long as you know what, what isn't waiting and what, what isn't waiting, it has to be, you know, I'm trying to grow the retention. I'm trying to grow the top of the funnel, right? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get to prove that this is a, an audience that's going to stick around. And then you can try various different ways of monetizing that audience. Um, but, you know, I think, I think it is good to know kind of where it could go. Um, but it, it, it's also true that sometimes you're surprised. Like, I, I would never have built the Meet Me uh, uh, audience up to a million users and said, well, you know how we're going to monetize this the best? Through mm. live streaming video. Because it didn't <laughs> exist, <laughs> you know, when, when we built it. So, so some of it is, you know, just as faith that, like, if you have a sense for what media monetizes at per hour of consumption, then as long, you know, if you stay within some r- relative bounds, then you can just have some faith that you'll be able to figure out a way to monetize media at a similar rate in the in the future. So take us uh, on on this journey, if you will. You've gone through many iterations of either yourself or working with other people who have taken their idea, have gone from idea to actual implementation. A lot of entrepreneurs listening are stuck at the idea part. How do they actually bring forth something into being? Uh, because you clearly have done so a number of times. Um, yeah, so, so I think I think it, it takes um, a lot of... Of commitment. So, 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 so you know, it, 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 uh, in the, the early days, it, it's almost just very single mindedness, right? So, mm-hmm. um, in, in the early days of, of Essay Edge, it was, you know, th- probably three, two, three months of work just to get the thing so that it could take the first order. But I, I was just interested in it, right? So, like, I, I just thought, you know, it's interesting to learn this stuff. Um, and then in the early days of, of, of my yearbook, I was thinking, gee, this is this could be a huge opportunity if only I could build a website that's a social <laughs> network for meeting new people. And so there it was, I thought, gee, this, you know, this, I wasn't looking for a side job. I thought this was going to be a monster opportunity. Um, and, and I wanted to get there before, you know, the, the dozens of other people who probably also thought the same thing at the same time. Um, so, so I, you know, I, I think I think what maybe a talent that that that's important to have is, especially for getting something off the ground, is is to be able to wear a lot of hats, right? If if you could be the marketing person in the early days, you know, I, I was unfortunately for for my yearbook the uh, the database administrator, right? Like if, if you're if you're uh, if you're able to wear a lot of different hats, um, that might be the only way to do it, unless you have like the right co-founders around you and. And that that adds a lot of complexity, um, uh, you know, th- th- and maybe even requires more lightning in a bottle. But you know, I, I don't. I, I certainly realize that most of these um, stories are, um, and, and you know, and, and told in retrospect, these are these always sound very very linear. But like my yearbook wasn't the first idea I had, right? It was originally going to uh, essay edge was great. It was basically the first idea I had, and it was it just worked well. The next thing I was like, well, um, I just sold this other company. What's the next thing going to be? And I, I, you know, it was going to be art. It was going to be a college guide, uh, insider guides for colleges. Um, 
you know, there are two things that basically I explored and failed. And it's like, you know what, this other thing maybe. And, and then, and then that started growing faster than everything else. And so then I took the, the, the art thing and, and just sold it for just basically, uh, close to what I bought it for. And, and, and then the, um, uh, and just put all my, my effort into the one thing that was actually working. So based upon this experience, how important would you say it is to be just open to feedback? I mean, you, from the marketplace or either just, you know, cause the customers do kind of speak from time to time. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a lot about feedback from, from users. So, you know, if, if you're building an app and you're not sweating what your day two retention is, you know, is it, <laughs> is it 45% or is it 50% is your day, you know, 30 retention, 15%, 8%, or, you know, if you're a world beater, 25%, right? If, if you're not sweating those types of metrics, then, and, and, and then, you know, all the metrics that kind of build up to those, you're, you're not patient and data gathering in anything you build is, is really, really important. Yeah, I totally get that. Now, for, for those that have listened this far and, have enjoyed uh, our conversation, what you guys are up to, what's going to be the best way for them to, to track you down and find out more what you guys got going on? Um, the best way would be to download any of our apps on the meet group. Meet me is, is probably the one I would recommend. Uh, meet me for this audience. Uh, uh, we also have a, a, a more uh, dating oriented app. It's called Lavoo, L-O-V-O-O. L -O -V -O -O. Um, and then if you want to check out Podcoin, you could, you could find that at a, uh, uh, just on an, an app store or, or, or on Android play store um, or at podcoin.com. Excellent. Now, as we wind down here, I've got a final question for you because I'm curious to hear your answers, especially since you've started new things so many times. Um, I know that there's a number of individuals who are listening and maybe just listening to you. They're like, okay, I can, I can do this, you know, it, if Jeff can do it, I can do it. I mean, he's done it multiple times. It, 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 he's, not all of them have worked out, but that's okay. And, and now they're at what I like to call the precipice of decision. They're, they're just at that point. And you've been there many times. It's a, what happens, though, is that oftentimes when we're at that point, we, um, we have a companion. And that companion comes in the form of a voice. And it's a voice that reminds us of, wow, don't you remember what happened last time? And, oh, my God, you're going to do what? You're going to hold on. Wait a minute. You're going to have people like actually pay you for for helping them build an audience. I don't, I don't understand. How's that live streaming? None of this makes any sense. Right. And for some people, they're related to that voice. So my question to you is as follows. Let's pretend that this time they're going to it's going to be different. They are going to do exactly what you suggest, Jeff. Exactly. And they're going to do it in the next 24 to 48 hours. What would you suggest that they do as far as a specific idea that, that they that they go pursue or yeah they, they're, they they're yeah. trying to get they're trying to catch up they're, they they've got that idea they're at that decision they're ready to go <laughs> got it um you know it, it it's it's tough because because it's it, right now um there's not, it, it, you know, once I find something that seems to be, be working, um, you know, what, what in, I keep going down that path. So right now it's live streaming and, and, and various, you know, games that you can play while live streaming. So, so maybe if you could come up with a, a live streaming version of the, the gong show or, or pick your favorite <laughs> show and, 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 and create a live stream. Of that, um, you know, that, and, and you have to kind of understand that, that the shows that work well, work, work best with live streaming are the ones that are the most interactive. But um, I would say, you know, I, I it, it, most of the, at least more, the majority of the ideas that I've had uh, don't work out. And so um, the, the trick is often, not necessarily. I, I think I was very, very lucky in that the first idea I had on editing and as a college student, when it didn't matter at all if it worked out or if it didn't, like I didn't have kids, I didn't have a mortgage, right? It, 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 wouldn't, it didn't affect my well-being at one bit um, if that thing had failed. Um, but instead, it didn't fail. You know, it, it, it succeeded. 
And then that helped set up the second thing because now I had a, a success in my belt. So I could raise some angel money and experiment and fail a couple times mm-hmm. and, and then hit on something. So I, I think the key piece is like sticking to it, like, you know, mm-hmm. you know and, and, and knowing the art of the pivot, right? Like the art of the pivot is I've learned something from this other failure that I can apply to the next idea. And that next idea may not even be all that recognizable to the first idea. Um, and eventually I'm going to learn enough to get my day 30 retention to look like 20%, right? Like mm-hmm. if you know what you're trying to solve for and then you're saying, well, gee, this is too far away. I got to find something else. Um, I, I have this kind of this quality where I, I tend to think everything I'm building is going to work out. And then I'm always surprised that it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I think but occasionally, we, occasionally it does. Yeah, I, I think many entrepreneurs can relate to why. Do, what's wrong? I don't understand. It's a great idea, isn't it? In the marketplace, well, they let us know sometimes that it's not. So uh, I definitely appreciate the the journey that you've gone on, uh, the the risks that you have taken, and just how you you're choosing to to represent yourself into the world and and be what you are for for entrepreneurs so i I absolutely appreciate that and i want to be the first to say thanks for taking the time to share with us today at the cash flow diary thank you all right ladies and gentlemen you know what time it is it's time for you to move at the speed of instruction what does that mean well you've got meet me you also got podcoin and but most importantly i think we learned a number of lessons today i mean obviously we know we have to stick to it right and we got to be willing to pivot and because the feedback it, it coming from the marketplace is it's valuable it's there but also know that even if you're working in a library right now you too got a shot ladies and gentlemen it's been fun talking to you guys today i look forward to talking to you soon until next time 